Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is my video on the Solus setup. So I want to run Solus GNOME uh, just to um, uh, see how that would work. Uh, of course, uh, first let's go ahead and start out with the grammar. I'm going to use GNOME and GNOME interchangeably for you grammar Nazis. I'm just going to delete your comments. Um, both of those are accepted terminology by the foundation. They're both used and they are both documented. The original pronunciation was GNOME based on GNU, but GNOME is also appropriate. So I will use either one uh, throughout interchangeably, just an FYI for that. Um, as you know, if you follow my channel, I am not a huge fan of the GNOME desktop environment. Um, I will actually, probably in a week or so, I'm going to tell you the reasons why I don't like it. I'm familiar with it. I know how it works. I can work my way around it. It is just the last desktop environment I ever really want to use. Uh, but this computer is the computer that I use to test out different distros, and I like getting experience with a variety of different software, a variety of different environments. Um, and uh, really, I, this isn't a computer that really has a solid home base to say, this is what this will always run. I do that for my production computers where I run Linux Mint Cinnamon because I don't have headaches. Um, and today what we're going to do is I'm going to walk through the Solus GNOME setup here and uh, we will talk about uh, how I set it up, um, the challenges. So far this has been the least stable distro I have used uh, for this computer. Um, it'd be curious, maybe I should run elementary next to see if elementary is as bad because this is, uh, I've had a horrible experience uh, so far. Um, and I'm on day one. <laughs> I came this close to abandoning this. I guess one of the first things I do before I, before I drop the camera size is um, one of the first challenges is Solus, and this seems to be a problem I think with Solus greater right now, is do not, do not use di full disk encryption. It is an option in the installer, and I said, no, let's just go ahead and do that. No, if you have full disk encryption, the first time you update the system, it will brick it. And so that was uh, the first challenge I encountered today. And I remember kind of vaguely hearing something about that, uh, but I don't recall, like, I, I didn't remember if it was this one or whatever else. So I start looking it up. It does turn out there is a bug report about this, uh, that if you install it, updating the system will end up breaking the crypt utilities and then, you know, getting it back working. I'm sure there's a workaround if I really want to make it work path of least resistance for me was just to reinstall it without the disk encryption. So do not run any desktop environment of Solus on disk encryption right now until you see from the foundation that it is actually working because it broke it. I mean, I had it installed. Everything was running just fine. I had ran updates. I would installed all the software I wanted. I rebooted the computer and it was dead. And so that was the challenge. The second major challenge I've had is that this has been the Linux distro. I have so far today, in just a couple hours setting this up, I have had to pull the power from the computer no less than five times and hard reboot the thing. It was, uh, I had one complete system freeze. Um, I had uh, three cases. I, oh, I had one case where uh, the, when the, you know, um, the screen, you know, the screen blacked out and trying to boot it up, it would not even let me enter a password. Literally, anytime I'd try to enter a password, I'd enter a key, and after a second, it would delete everything in the field. I don't know why. Um, and so I ended up um, having to force shut down the computer then, turn it back on. It was working fine again. Um, and then I had three instances where I'm booting up the computer and all I get is a black screen with a blinking cursor and nothing else. So needless to say, this has not been a good experience setting this up. Now, I'm not sure if that's a, a, an artifact of running GNOME or if that's an artifact of Solace itself. I believe, first and foremost, to have a full opinion of Solace, I'm going to have to run it on Budgie because that's kind of their thing, Solace Budgie. It'd be kind of like reviewing uh, and making a full review of Mint running KDE. Uh, well, Cinnamon is really Mint's thing. So if you really want the best environment, you know, the best take on what Linux Mint does, um, you need to really need to run it on Cinnamon. And, uh, and so 
I do need to give Solace that. I am giving Solace. It will probably appear on my top list of distros for, for 2018. And uh, the reason is it's good. It's ground up. It seems solid everywhere else I've seen it. Um, and the incorporation of the snap packages means that even the packages that are not in the repos like Chromium are very fast and very easy to install. And so I'm thinking a lot of my challenges has to do with the GNOME environment. And uh, a lot of that just has to do with how system heavy the GNOME system is. So let's go ahead and reduce the camera size and we'll give you a walk through the system here. Okay, so uh, first is what type of system resources does it use? Well, right after I booted up the computer, I took a screenshot of the resource manager so you can kind of see that. Uh, so this is kind of what the system was running when we started. You know, this computer has four CPUs, one's at 27%, uh, three, three, and one. Uh, memory, it's using 1.2 gigabyte of memory out of six on this. Um, this is a Lenovo. I forget what model it is, but it's it's a Lenovo, you know, all in one, um, you know, APU kind of whatever there. Uh, so this is kind of what the system was running before I was recording everything. So just to give you a, a look at what that looked like. Um, and so as far as the, the basic setup, um, we had a, a fairly basic setup of of GNOME, we did have the dash to dock installed by default, uh, which is good because I think that that's the one thing that's going to make a lot of users comfortable. However, I did move it. I moved it to the other side. Um, and actually what right now you'll see, it's kind of, it's kind of this white. It should be black with transparency, not white. Every now and again that happens. So I am already getting some inconsistency with it. Um, of course, some of the other extensions that were pre-installed um, is supposed to be a tool that makes it snappier, although this has been the least snappy system I have ever worked with so far. It did have the option to put this bar down here at the bottom. This is one of those non-negotiables for me. But again, this is a criticism of GNOME, not Solace, is that GNOME itself is just not customizable. Sure, we can add extensions, but then you end up getting this piecemate thrown together stuff because this here, while it's a fairly skeuomorphic design that I like, it doesn't flush with the rest of the system. And so it looks extremely patched together and out of place. And that's one of those challenges is that you really don't have that customizability to make GNOME really your own. Um, we do have, um, you know, the software installed by default, uh, Firefox was in there by default, uh, Thunderbird was in there by default. However, it actually wasn't in my applications list and I didn't see it in the applications list, um, until I really started hunting for it a few times. Um, the default movie player is the GNOME MPV, uh, default audio was set to rhythm box. Um, and the applications that I have installed personally, I installed VLC, um, I installed Simple Screen Recorder, uh, OBS, Midori, Kodi, uh, and Chromium came from a snap package and I installed Evolution as well for, for managing email. Um, I was able to take my email setups and, um, uh, I was able to take those email setups and oh, this is another thing I hate about this. It's like that. I hate that stupid thing. Um, geez. Okay. Um, which can be disabled. It's a hot corner. I believe it. I hope it can be disabled. It drives me crazy. I hate hot corners. Um, and GNOME seems to be completely relying on either hot corners or the keyboard. And that's one of the things that makes it stupid. I like the good balance of mouse, hot corners if, if you want them, and keyboard, which is what I get on Cinnamon. All right, so, um, oh, I also installed GIMP. I didn't see GIMP in the list. So that's kind of what I did to install, uh, installing the software. Uh, that went well. Of course, it was just kind of a bear to work through because, I mean, you see, I just hit the open desktop background. There it goes, like 15 seconds later, the thing finally gets to open up. The same, I'm getting the same exact result if I try and open a web browser. So we'll click a button there for a web browser. You'll see I get the, uh, I'm going to call this the same thing on, on the Mac, the spinny circle of doom. It takes that long to load up. I, what? Okay. Took that long to load up Firefox. Okay. Um, I don't know how long it's going to take to load up Chromium. Let's have a look there. But I mean, it's just, it's just slow. It's just slow and encumbering. It's like you're trying to 
dare I say it, it's you're trying to get a big person off a couch. <laughs> Just, we're moving, we're getting there. <sighs> and then now I'm getting, okay, so it hit the close button and it took five seconds to close the application. Um, so here's, of course, our settings. Um, looking at our settings, you know, I did adjust these. It did set Midori. When I installed Midori, it set Midori at the default. Firefox is the default being it's the only web application. Thunderbird was the default for mail, but I use Evolution for uh, my business emails. I set both music and video to MP, uh, MPV, so if I double-click on something, it opens up a lightweight application, but if I want something real or bulky, I'll go with Kodi or VLC. That's just the way I like to do things. So I had no problem getting all those set up the way I like them. Um, I disabled the Wi-Fi. Uh, this, this computer does have uh, a gigabit ports and Wi-Fi ports, so I went ahead and disabled the Wi-Fi uh, because I don't use it on this particular computer. Um, backgrounds. Um, we had a you know the fair amount of backgrounds, just the same backgrounds you'd expect in GNOME, plus a few Solace ones. I like this blue fabric background best of all of them, so it's just kind of nice. It's not too bright, not too dark, you know, pretty much what I want. Um, here's notifications. Again, again, you can see how encumbering it is when I click something, and it's not because I'm recording the video. I mean, it took me quite a while to set all, all this, to go through all the settings because of how long it takes to do this. There you go. Um, here's your online accounts, of course. Uh, privacy, I did not change any of the privacy, so by default, screen lock is on, uh, usage and history is on, purge trash and temporary files is off, and location services is off, so that's good. Um, I do, um, I did have to turn on the desktop applications, which I was able to do inside of the uh, tweak tools, which are installed by default, so you can come down here and run tweaks by default. All right, so I did set global dark themes. It is a light theme by default. I went with uh, this Aptia uh, Nocto ETA uh, for the applications in the shell. I kept the cursors at Breeze, and I changed the icons to Faba because I like these ones a whole lot better than those flat ones they had. This, um, I had to turn on the desktop icons, so I went ahead and disabled or enabled that, turned all those on. We do have a lot of extensions. The only extension that I installed that was not installed by default is Caffeine. Um, as I said, I did move the dash to dock around. I did move it over uh, to the right instead of the left, which is my preference to have, uh, have my docks over there rather than on this side. I also uh, set it so it does not auto hide. However, um, it's a lot easier to go under it than the Cairo dock is. Um, but regardless, that's okay. Here's the impatience. It's supposed to speed up the GNOME shell animation speeds. I'm wondering if I turn that off, if things are going get, to get better. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, so you can see everything else is, is what they have installed by default. Um, I change, I added the date to the top bar. I like the date on there. Um, you know what? I'd like to kind of customize that. I don't remember how to customize the clock. I, I really am, don't generally read military time. I'm sure there's, there's a way I could find by doing a quick internet search. Here, of course, I changed. I kept all these the same. They were pretty much the focus. Actually, I think the, the thing that I did different is, for me, the big deal is um, I like being able to, to click my dock and open a new instance. And so that's one of the things that I did do is I set it uh, to do that. That was one of the only changes that I did is inside of here. Uh, where was it at? I thought it was in here. Yeah, maybe it was in the dash. I think I did it in the dash to dock. I, yeah, that's right. It was the setting in the dash to dock. So I set that up. Um, so you can see now that the dock is back to the color I wanted it to be, which is kind of that black. I don't know ever, why, but every now and again, it just kind of reverts to that white color. I don't know. Um, of course, I, tr I disabled workspaces. I generally don't use workspaces unless I'm on, you know, I'll, if I want multiple workspaces, I'll throw another monitor on the computer. Uh, so that's kind of how I have the setup. Um, I did not test all the networking drives. I did actually uh, import both my Thunderbird. Which I don't know why I don't have my Thunderbird icon there. Um, I did import my email accounts from Evolution and from Thunderbird in from my, uh, my main work Linux computer. So uh, that made it very easy. Um, 
This was actually something that, that Outlook stopped doing is they stopped having the ability to have all of your account settings exportable. Well, fortunately, you can still do it on Linux by uh, moving the, the local and the config files uh, for Evolution and Thunderbird. You move the files into the system. Thunderbird, it actually saved everything perfectly. Evolution, you just have to go in and enter the passwords to the accounts again, which is a huge win to having to set up everything because it brings over the folders, the emails, the account settings, and all of your your uh, rules. Uh, the only thing I have to enter on Evolution is re-enter the password, save them to the key ring on the local computer. That's an absolute win. Love that functionality. Um, so overall, we are essentially set up. So I will be running this computer for a few weeks. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to last me that long. Uh, to be honest, it's very slow. It's very buggy. Um, and it's it's not a good user experience for me. Um, and you know, this, this computer, I mean, this computer has run Ubuntu, Linux Mint KDE. I've run, you know, the modern Ubuntu with GNOME. Um, I've run, you know, a split desktop environment of Debian. I ran Manjaro Budgie on it. I think so far of all the testing distros, Manjaro Budgie has been my favorite. I think when this is done, I might go with Solace Budgie. Um, and which I think I can actually do just, I think I can change the, the, um, the desktop manager just by, uh, or the, the desktop environment in the terminal on this. So I might do that if, if GNOME becomes too much of a burden. Um, but overall my experience has not been positive. Uh, and I'm not really griping on the whole system. It's just, this was, a, this was a little bit more buggy. I've had to force shut down the computer too many times. Um, disk encryption is an option at, at install, but it doesn't work uh, right after you update the system. Um, and then there's some weird things I, I'm still questioning on Solus, like the required updates. Well, they don't update it for you like Windows. If you run updates at all, it requires you to run certain updates. I'm a little leery about that. Um, and that's just kind of, that's just kind of the thing. So, uh, regardless, this is going to be the desktop setup that I will have, uh, running for, oh, oh boy, I get it. Do I get it down there too? Or did I actually hit the top? I don't know. Uh, regardless, hey, hate those hot corners. All right. So anyway, uh, this is going to be the desktop that I'm running with for a little while. Um, so I'm going to be, uh, you know, doing the video over here, um, watching movies over here, listening to music over here. And in a few weeks, um, I'll give you a final analysis. Like I said, I might do a top, uh, a top five next week. Top five things I hate about GNOME. <laughs> I don't know. I just hate this desktop environment. I'm trying not to let it bias me. And that's why I keep on running systems with it. But it's just, you know, I know how to use it. I mean, I'm, it's not like I'm lost in it. It's, there's a bunch of things I don't like about it. So, um, I'm trying not to let that taint me with the experience of this. And I'm thinking a lot of the problems I had had more to do with GNOME than it had to do with Solus itself. Uh, but regardless, uh, we'll see how I, uh, how I run with Solus after a, a couple weeks. So thanks for watching. And I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. And a final post note, I totally forgot to mention this part. Every video I have uh, been uploading is getting demonetized. So that's why I'm being a little harder about pushing the Patreon, pushing the Amazon. Uh, go ahead and use those links. Join up on Patreon if you want. I don't know what I did that time. I think I pushed a key. Um, what did I push? Uh, I guess I pushed the meta key. All right. Um, so regardless, um, you can support me over there on Patreon. You can support me on Amazon. Um, check out switchlinux.com forward slash support to learn about the ways that you can support us. Thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.